Today I'm taking on one of our user challenge builds. This comes from our viewer FaZe. FaZe asked me to create a sanctuary specialist and specifically asked that they not be support only. I thought this was a cool challenge, so we're gonna go ahead and do that today. Let's do it. So first off, let's begin by talking about what we can do while we have Sanctuary on us. Now we can heal, we can buff our allies, we can manipulate the battlefield, and we can also have summons. On top of that, we can also have concentration spells that don't do damage. If we cast the concentration spell, we can maintain concentration, have Sanctuary on us, so long as whatever we're concentrating on doesn't do damage to anyone. Now we take that list and we ask ourselves, how can we get Sanctuary? Well, it really comes down to there's the Artifice at first level, there's the cleric at first level, and then you have a couple paladins, and then the odd warlock. Now the warlock's not going to work because using a warlock spell slot on sanctuary is just too pricey, so the warlock can get tossed out pretty quick. Now when it comes to the paladins, not only are we getting sanctuary later by being a half caster, but we're also wanting to make attacks as a paladin. We're not going to have much else to do other than attack, so a sanctuary is not quite the right fit for a paladin. So that leaves cleric, and that leaves artificer. Now I don't want to go full artificer because again, I'm a half caster. Taking that one level in Artificer to get Sanctuary is just fine, but going complete Artificer, we're not the best casters, and this is probably going to be a caster-based build. So it really screams Cleric, but as I look down the Cleric spell list, I don't see many battlefield manipulation. I don't see many summons. I don't see anything outside of healing and team support, which the viewer specifically said he didn't want to be our focus for the Sanctuary build. So we need to multi-class, but it's really important that our Sanctuary save DC is good. So I don't want to multi-class out of our stats. So it becomes very clear that we're going to need to either be one level dip into Artificer and then going Wizard for the rest, or we can do one level in Cleric and go Druid for the rest. That's because Druid and Wizard give us both summons and that battlefield manipulation we're looking for. Now when we compare the two on the Artificer Wizard side, they're going to be more tanky because they get to have medium armor and a shield. On top of that, they're going to have better control spells. Wall of Force is better than Stonewall, for example, even though Stonewall is great. Great, wall of Force is better. And also wizards come with better control spells, things like Hypnotic Pattern stand out. Now on the Druid Cleric side, the Cleric one level dip gives us a subclass, so it's a much more powerful first level dip. And then Druids have fantastic summons, they still have good battlefield control. So looking down both these paths, I really can't decide, they're both fantastic. But luckily the Challenger decided for me, because the Challenger wanted a less emphasis on team support. The Druid, a lot of their strength is going to come from their team support, healing word, things like that. So because of the request I have, I'm gonna go the wizard artificer route, but I think there's a really cool build to be done on this cleric druid side. A sanctuary specialist over there would be awesome. But we've made our choice, so now it's time to state our stats. Intelligence is king with this build. After that, it's gonna be constitution, then dexterity, your typical wizard stats. As for our leveling structure, I want to take that first level in wizard because I wanted wisdom save proficiency. But what's really cool is that, you know, constitution saves are amazing. Usually we want to go artificer first for that, but this is a sanctuary specialist. So we are going to have an ability to make fewer attacks actually come towards us, which means our build already kind of supports our con saves, but it doesn't support our wisdom saves. So for that reason, because we have more AC than a normal wizard, because we're going to have sanctuary on us more often than not, I wanted to go wisdom instead of constitution, and I feel like this build really allows for that. Now after that first level in wizard, we're going to go back into artificer, because luckily we still get medium armor and we still get shields by leveling up this way, so that's really convenient for us. And then we're going to go back into wizard for the rest of our career. So our next question becomes, what subclass are we going to be going into wizard? And I thought the most reasonable way to approach that would begin with our specialized spell. It's an abjuration spell, so School of Abjuration does that work for this build. Well, what School of Abjuration is going to give us is first, it gives us a ward, something that protects our HP, meaning we're gonna have to do fewer constitution saves because they have to break the ward before we have to do con saves. That's cool. And combined with Sanctuary, it means that we're gonna get hit less often. And even when we do, we have a ward. I like that synergy. And then every time we cast Sanctuary, it also gives a little bit back to our ward. It's not much, but it's something. And I, and I like that. I think it's cool. And then at level six, we can give our ward away to people. So we have the ability to protect ourselves and protect our allies. And then we become Counterspell and Dispel Magic Specialists, which is incredible. And I love that. And yeah, I think Abjurer works fantastic. Let's go with Abjurer. Okay, that all sounds good. So let's go to our link lineage next and pretty clear really quickly that there are very few lineages that don't work with this setup. But whatever is most flavorful for you, I recommend you go with. 
I ended up going with Halfling because Halfling's luck is fantastic. And I was thinking about feats after we get maximized intelligence. And I thought that the bountiful luck, our ability to give luck to our teammates, we protect ourselves, we stay alive. And by us staying alive, our team becomes resistant to nat ones. That seems pretty fantastic for me. So I ended up going the Halfling route, but I really can't stress enough that there are, there are like two races that don't work with this build because we have medium armor and they can't fly. So I can't stress enough just go with what feels best. So now we have our setup and even our spells have kind of been described to us. As we go through our spell list, all we're really doing is we're saying, is it a summon? Does it control the battlefield? Can it heal our teammates? Does it buff our allies? So our spell list is basically decided for us. And what I was really surprised at is how many powerful spells we can use while under the effects of Sanctuary. So a spell like Web, for example, it can't be cast while we have Sanctuary on ourselves. That'll end the Sanctuary. But after we cast it, we can then turn on Sanctuary. And so Web is fantastic, an absolutely incredible spell. On top of that, we can have things like Hypnotic Pattern and the Summons of third level. Fourth level comes with Banishment, which Banishment is pretty interesting because we want to sometimes make sure we do not lose concentration on Banishment because it literally banishes them from this existence. So Dodge Action plus Sanctuary becomes a really powerful defense for us maintaining that concentration as long as we need. Simpler, but probably more powerful is just Polymorph and our additional Summons. Fifth level, we get wall of force which is absolutely insane and the fact that we can do it with sanctuary is bonkers we're an incredibly powerful caster that's just harder to kill than normal that's really what the sanctuary specialist comes down to as for our first level spells i think that cure wounds from artificer is nice as just an emergency heal and absorb elements is going to be fantastic with this build almost required because dexterity saves are one of our weaknesses we may invest some into dex but probably only two points and we have low hp we might be able to dodge a bunch of stuff we might avoid getting attacked a lot, but deck saves go right through Sanctuary, and because we have such low health, they will whittle us down quickly. So I think Absorb Elements is pretty much essential to have on this build. And finally, I want to discuss our cantrips, because I think this is an interesting opportunity for cantrips. Usually we want to take something like Firebolt or Chill Touch, but this is a pretty good opportunity because when we have Sanctuary on, we can't use those. So I like the idea of using resistance or guidance in combat. So that way we can improve our team's saving throws or their skill checks, and we can do different things that usually get completely ignored because we can't make attacks anyway, so we might as well. The final thing I wanna talk about is as we level up, the, what we're going to do with our ASIs. Now, if we have an odd intelligence, we're gonna take a half feat. And because we basically get every spell we need already, this is a good opportunity to take telekinetic instead of something like Fae touched. What's really cool about tel telekinetic is we can affect our enemies without turning off sanctuary. So I really like telekinetic here. I think it fits like a glove. Now after our half feet, or if we started out with an even intelligence, we're just going to want to max out our intelligence. It just makes our sanctuary and all of our spells way better. So it's, it's pretty obvious to do. And then after that, I really like the bountiful luck feat, but there are a ton of different options you can take. So really just be flexible and go with the flavor that you love. What we've created here is an unusually hard to kill character. That's really what sanctuary does. Mixed with Abjuration Wizard, it all comes together really nicely. And since we are harder to kill, it means we can stay around and support our team better. This means that we can have summons out longer. It means that we can have battlefield control out longer. It means if we have a big, big fight winning spell out there, we can really protect our own concentration. It means that we have a feat as a reaction that's keeping our teammates from rolling nat one. So we are just going to be an absolute nuisance and we're going to survive for those moments when they're casting a huge spell and we're going to have a big counter spell on deck. Now, Counterspell is going to end our Sanctuary, but there's going to be many a time that it's completely worth it to do. Now, this was a fun challenge to build around, and I would love to hear what you guys would have done with the same challenge. Let me know in the comments down below. As always, I want to just say a big thank you to you all for taking the time to watch the video. You don't know how much we appreciate it here at D&D Daily. But with that, my friends, I hope to see you on the next one, and I'll catch you then. Later!